Hello, my name is Ross Taylor. Harry Coyman and I are the architects of the Column Simulation Program, CHEMSEP. Shown above our names is a screen capture of a flow sheet for a ethylene glycol plant created in cocoa by Harry. I will be using this flow sheet as the vehicle to demonstrate some of the new features in CHEMSEP. Jing Song Cho is a PhD candidate at Clarkson University. Some aspects of his work will be highlighted in the second half of this presentation. Before we go too far, we would like to offer our thanks to the entire Cape Open community for your efforts. Without your participation, CHEMSEP would never have become a well-known and widely used simulation tool. Our particular thanks to Richard Bauer and Jasper van Barten for their past and present help towards making CHEMSEP a Cape Open compliant tool. Here is the outline for this talk. We start with some remarks on rating and cost estimation in CHEMSEP. This leads naturally to showing that CHEMSEP now can communicate with column design tools from some of the well-known equipment vendors. I will make some remarks concerning the speed of rate-based simulations and continue from there with a commentary on Cape Open icons. I will introduce the CHEMSEP parallel column model and end with some brief comments on other topics. We return now to the ethylene glycol plant from the title slide. As noted earlier, this was made in cocoa by Harry. Now, if one moves the mouse pointer to hover over one of the solved columns, a summary box appears containing those results deemed important by the flow sheet creator. In this case, that includes the size of the column and its cost. Look at the last few lines in the yellow box. Double click on the column icon and open the CHEMSEP interface to see the brand new rating panel. Here we combine simulation results with some basic selections by the engineer, for example the column internals type. In order to be able to size the column using our own internal design calculations. The bottom segment of this panel shows a simple cost estimation to which we will provide a closer look momentarily. The main reason for wanting to include cost calculations within CHEMSEP is our desire to be able to compare different process configurations on the only basis that really matters, economics. There is therefore a need for the cost information to be available to the PME, but the actual cost calculation belongs to the unit operation itself. CHEMSEP employs a simple model based on total annualized cost. Input information includes the material of construction, the M&S index, and the energy cost. Output includes the costs of the column shell, any heat exchanges. Pumping costs are ignored here. And the end result is the total annualized cost shown at the bottom right in this screenshot. Returning to the rating panel, we see a button labeled Vendor Tools. It is at the pointed end of the red arrow in this image. Click on that button and you are invited to save a file in one of several different formats applicable to the different design tools made available by some of the major equipment vendors. Save the file and the appropriate vendor tool may be opened and used to design the column using their proprietary methods. Here, for example, are two overlapping screenshots for the program KG Tower from Coke Glitch. This is Solcol from Solza Chemtech. And this is Winsorp from Rashig. Results from these packages can be used within a rate-based simulation in CHEMSEP in place of CHEMSEP's own internal design calculation. Reintroducing the design obtained from a vendor tool must at present be done by hand since these tools do not as yet provide a mechanism to pass the design back to CHEMSEP. 
One of the long-standing complaints about rate-based simulation it is that it is significantly slower than a, an equivalent equilibrium stage calculation. To some extent, this is more or less inevitable since the models are significantly more complicated with many more equations, many more physical properties, and more complicated equations at that. In particular, flow models other than mixed require extensive matrix computations. Recently, we were able to speed up these flow model calculations so that now all flow models take more or less the same amount of time. In one particular application of significance to a ChemSEP user, we were able to speed up the calculations by a factor of 18. We must sometimes deal with what we call cosy compounds. These are compounds not present in our own data bank and for which property information must be provided entirely by the PME. Recently, we made it possible for ChemSEP to create data banks of property constants during a running simulation. This can result in some modest speed gains if we can now use ChemSEP internal properties rather than properties provided by the PME. More significantly, however, this can eliminate the need for access to the PME when troubleshooting a difficult simulation, assuming that is the issues are with the unit operation and not with the PME or the connection between the unit operation and the PME. The next set of slides concerns flow sheet appearance, specifically the lack of realism because of the use of generic Cape Open icons in some systems. This image shows a flow sheet in Unisim Design that contains three ChemSEP column models. However, none of the icons faithfully captures the appearance of any of the individual columns. Only one of these columns has a condenser, only one has a reboiler, and not the same one that has the condenser. Each column has multiple product streams, but they appear here in all cases as only one. And each column, in this case, has multiple feeds, but again, they appear as a single stream. This is in complete contrast to the icons in COCO. These icons reflect much more accurately the actual configuration. Moreover, they change appearance when the column configuration in ChemSEP changes. This works as follows. ChemSEP writes the icon structure to the SEP file in a format that COCO can recognize. COCO reads the SEP file, checks if the icon has been changed, and if so, asks the user if they want the updated icon to appear on the flow sheet. If you answer yes, then the icon is changed. It could perhaps be done a little bit differently to make it more generic and more versatile. The unit operation could write an icon as a SVG image, for example. The PME then reads the unit operation output and determines from a checksum if the icon has changed. If it has, the PME displays the new icon. However it is done, we would like to see process modeling environments display more accurate icons to properly reflect the actual process. Another neat trick in Coco's repertoire is that the user can create entirely new icons. Here are two that we created to represent two different types of dividing wall column, to the modeling of which we now turn our attention. Those of us in the distillation community will know that dividing wall columns are literally all the rage right now because of their now well-established ability to save both capital and operating costs. The literature on dividing wall columns has grown rapidly over the last few years and several reviews already have appeared. This is a drawing of an actual dividing wall column from a paper by Dijanovic et al. The complete reference is given at the foot of this page. The column can be represented schematically like this. Our interest is in the modeling and simulation of these kinds of columns. Up to now, there exists no standard model for a dividing wall column in any of the major flow sheet simulation systems. Thus, engineers have adopted alternative strategies to be able to model these columns. The most common approach 
is to break the column into a number of interlinked independent segments. Each of the segments is modeled using the flow sheet's own simulation system. Here, for example, is a multi-column model in Unisim design. And here, the same thing in Coco. One could imagine that the multi-column model could be hidden behind one of the new icons I showed a few moments ago, representing a complete subflow sheet of column units and mixers and splitters. But that is actually not our interest at all in creating the new icon. Our goal is to be able to model a dividing wall column as an entire unit in one go. And to that end, we introduce the ChemSet Parallel Column Model, or PCM. It is equation-based, meaning all of the equations are solved simultaneously using Newton's method. Results from the ChemSet parallel column model for the Dijanovic column are shown here. Left is the temperature profile, center the flow profiles, and right selected composition profiles in the liquid phase. Here is another example. This is the satellite column system. The actual feed is to the center of the middle column in this image shown on the left here. This can be modeled in a conventional flow sheet simulator in a variety of ways. This, for example, is a construction in Coco, which is easy to converge, perhaps because it mimics the image on the left most closely. Here is an alternative in which seven separate column sections, each modeled by ChemSap, are linked together by Coco streams. We have not been able to get this version to converge, even though we know what the answer looks like and have very precise estimates of all of the streams linking all of the column units. Here's one in Unisim design. Perhaps the most onerous part of modeling dividing wall columns in this particular way is the time it takes to set up something like this. By contrast, the ChemSet parallel column model is quick and easy to set up, and at least in most cases that we have investigated so, so far, easy to converge. Our parallel column model can also be applied to model maldistribution in packed columns. Such a parallel column model was proposed by Billingham and Lockett in 2002. An illustration from their paper is shown on the left. On the right is the equivalent ChemSet parallel column model structure. Michael Schultes of Rashig proposed a similar model in 2000. His model has three parallel sections. Among other things, he introduces redistributors every so often. We can model those by allowing complete remixing and no mass transfer. At right is the parallel column model structure for his model on the left. Here we show some results from the maldistribution model. The top two lines are for a model with four redistributors and the bottom two lines for a model with two redistributors. The horizontal axis here represents the fraction of a stream split to a separate vertical segment of the column. What is clear is the significant impact of redistributors on maldistribution in pack columns. Finally, some other issues. There are two CAPE open standards for thermo packages, 1.0 and 1.1. We understand that there is a proposal under consideration to deprecate thermo 1.1. We are not in favor of th thermo 1.0. We are not in favor of this course of action because some of our users are not able to use thermo 1.1. As long as this situation remains, we think it unwise to formally deprecate 1.0. Recently, we had a need for specific gravity. We understand that this is not available as a standard Cape Open property constant. Liquid density at 25 degrees C, however, is available, but it is not the same as the specific gravity and requires an involved conversion. 
We recommend making specific gravity at 60 degrees Fahrenheit available as a Cape Open property constant. And so to conclude. New in ChemSet version 7.2 is the ability to fit group contribution model parameters such as UNIFAC and ASOG. I haven't demonstrated that uh, today, but uh, it is now possible. I have shown the rapid rating and costing tool that we now have, and that ChemSEP can communicate with column vendor tools. We spent a few minutes on rate-based simulation, and that uh, uh, ChemSEP now is significantly faster in some cases. And on our wish list, adaptable and editable icons for all process modeling environments, COCO already has these. If you point at a unit operation in a converged flow sheet, then the system displays a simulation summary for that unit operation. This is also possible now in COCO. Please do not deprecate Thermo 1.0 until all users can easily use Thermo 1.1. And we would like to see specific gravity as a, specific, as a property constant via Cape Open mechanisms. We also propose a Cape Open cost library of basic callable functions. Examples include a function to provide the cost of metal, a function to provide the cost of steam at different levels, a function to provide the cost of a pressure vessel. Other examples may easily be imagined. These functions can then be called by a unit operation together with information on the MNS index and the energy cost in order to assemble the uh, total annualized cost or some other measure of cost of the particular operations on the flow sheet. And finally, we introduced the ChemSEP parallel column model. We have used it to model dividing wall columns of many different configurations. We can use it to model maldistribution in pack columns. And although not featured in this particular presentation, we have used it to model multi-column systems such as the one shown on the left in COCO. The ChemSEP equivalent is a single model, equation-based, much easier to converge than is a multi-column model. This concludes the presentation. Clearly, since neither Harry nor I can be present, we are not able to easily answer questions at this time. However, if you have questions for us and you can send them to us by email, we would be more than happy to uh, answer them. Thank you for listening.